Hi there, so we're going to talk a little bit about C-sharp threading. So threading is all about, uh, when we talk about threading, we're usually talking about parallel processing. So that's what we want to focus on. So we've got a few slides to go through here. Let's talk just a little bit about synchronous and asynchronous programming for a moment. First, um, a synchronous program basically has a set of instructions and one can't execute until the previous one has completed. Asynchronous or parallel programming, we can have multiple instructions executing at the same time. Now there's a lot of this that happens at the operating system level that you don't really see, but this is about how you can write programs that would actually do this. So where, where might we need this parallel processing capability? So if you, ha if you were trying to get data from multiple websites at the same time, and that's the example we're actually going to build a program for, um, that's one place. Uh, you might want to read or write to multiple locations in memory or disk. And if we did these things synchronously, in other words, if we waited until everything finished on these, we would block the UI or other threads. So here's our sample program we're going to write. We're basically going to call four popular websites and return their home page. And all we're going to do, we're not going to display their home page, but we're just going to record how long it took to go get that data. We're going to write this as a WinForms Win application in C-sharp. And you see an example of the program run here. And what you'll notice here is we're going to call Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and Apple. And what you'll notice here is that they all start uh, uh, within a millisecond of each other. And um, they complete at different times. So they don't complete in the order that they started, and that's because they all started in parallel. So the one that... Com the one that um, the one that completed the first will, will be done, and there's obviously network latency involved in this as well. All right, so let's just talk about how we would create a method that would do this asynchronous programming. There's a keyword called async. You see it right here. And this async keyword um, is what makes a method be asynchronous or be able to be called asynchronously. Um, so... Uh, this particular method is going to record the time taken to get the data from the URL. So the, the call, this is a call from the .NET library that will actually go out using an HTTP client and go out and pull the data from a, a URL. Um, the async uh, method has the keyword, an async method has the keyword async, which you see here. And then it can return three things. It can either return a task, a task type, or a void. A task basically is just a promise of the work that's going to be completed. So <clears throat> you have to think of this like this. You're going to call this method. This method's not going to complete right away because it's going to be making this web call. So as soon as it makes the call to get string async, there's this await right here. You'll see this await keyword. So this will cause the control to leave this method right here. So it actually doesn't execute these last three lines of code initially. When this is done, however, when this is completed, when this get string async has completed, it will come back and execute those. So I know that seems a little weird because it's coming out of the method, but yet it's still going to come out of the method a second time. And don't really think it as returning from the method, but it's really just transferring control. <clears throat> we also see stopwatch functions here for recording time. We just do that to keep track of the elapsed time. All right, and this is how we would call this method that we just wrote, the get URL data async method. So you see our four different websites we're going to call, and we basically are looking for a task int from each one of these. Now, we could inline these actually and not have to do this in two sets of code the way it is. We could do int call Amazon equals await get URL data async. But I'm trying to illustrate the point that you can have non-related processing here. Um, and so basically this will uh, launch these calls to go get the data and then the awaits will happen. And again, remember that as soon as the await happens, it's going to transfer control out. So anything that's in between these lines of code here, the last task in and the first await, 
um, that code can go ahead and run uh, as long as it's not related. It can't be dependent on things coming back because things have not come back yet. They won't come back until we actually get down here. And then what we'll do is total the time up. We have to call this from an async method, so you'll notice that this is async as well. And each call returns a task type, which in our case is the elapsed time for that call. And because each call is non-blocking, the four calls are done in parallel. Non-related work can be done again where that comment is. And just like in the method where we are calling, await is non-blocking. And then finally, here's a button click event. So when we click the button, it's going to actually launch the time to load pages method using await on it as well. So it will return here as soon as everything's done. Um, and it will have recorded how long it took for the pages to render, all four of them total. So again, we have to call from an async method. And we have this inline use of await. This is what I was talking about before. So you could just inline it. So instead of doing a task type here, you can do an int type or the type that it does. So in .NET 4.5, uh, async programming, parallel programming is much easier with what they call uh, TPL. And um, it's much easier than manage all of this ourselves, and it's an easier threading model. It does take some time to understand a wait and a non-sequential execution, but once you get that figured out, it's pretty straightforward. So let's go on, and now that we are done with our slideshow, let's go look at the actual code. So here is our, here's our UI. It's pretty simple. It's a WinForms application. It's got a list box, and it's got a button. And I used the list box just so that we, get, we could visually make sure that we weren't blocking on the UI thread. So that's really important when you're building these type of applications. And so let's go, for example, let's uh, look at the code. Now the code's got a little bit more in it than what I showed you in the slides. I simplified the code in the slides. But um, this method is, the time to load pages method is the same. The get URL data async is a little bit different because I actually added code in here to add items to the list box for logging purposes. And then I also added a thing to call the list box here. So we start out with a button click, clear the list box of anything, call the time to load pages uh, asynchronously, and then when that is done, when it completes, it will actually uh, record the time taken to load pages, and that will be returned from this call. And so that calls this method, which turns around and asynchronously calls these four get URL data async calls in parallel. And the awaits happen. When we're all done, we'll return the time taken. And here's our get URL data async, which will get called four times. we we'll are start setting up our stopwatch and doing the elapsed time. So let's go ahead and run this and watch it work. Okay, so we'll click the button. So you'll notice the non-blocking nature of this. It's not freezing the UI. Um, it's, it's just interacting away. And you can see what's happening here. Amazon, get all four of these get launched within a couple of milliseconds. But then it takes 93 milliseconds for the first one to come back, uh, coming from Microsoft. So Microsoft was the second one called, but it was the first one coming back. And then Apple was actually the fourth one called, and it was the second one that came back. So you can see that these are done in parallel. And we're not trying to control which order they're happening. If we wanted to do that, we'd have to do sequential or synchronous programming, the way we described, where we wanted one to return before another one. So if for some reason you need, needed to get data from one website before you call another website, you'd want to set it up this way. But in this case, we just want to say, hey, we want to go to all this data and bring it back. It's kind of a silly little example, but hopefully it illustrates to you the use of async programming and the TPL model in .NET 4.5 and above. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it was useful. Thanks.